Time now, as we do every Sunday, to ask our great reporters to share something from the notebooks so that you can get out ahead of the curve when it comes to the big political news. Nia Malika Henderson, you're first. Uh, Democrats down in Texas, of course, there's a primary on Tuesday, worried about a woman named Keisha Rogers who is battling for the Democratic primary, uh, not in the U.S. Senate uh, race there. She's a LaRouchian. She wants to see Obama impeach. She's often seen uh, with posters of Obama with a Hitler mustache. They are worried uh, that she is really uh, disrupting their attempts to really rebrand and rebuild the Democratic Party uh, in Texas. They don't think she'll win, but they're worried uh, that she might do well in that primary. That would be a different kind of Democrat. Yeah, yeah we'll watch that one too. Yes, No, LaRouchian doesn't. LaRouchian here, isn't it? Yeah. Long ago, I covered his trial in Boston, but we won't digress. Uh, <laughs> staying in the Lone Star State, uh, there is a runoff this Tuesday. 91 year old Ralph Hall, the longtime congressman right. from North Texas, is locked in a runoff because he did not get 50% of the vote in the March primary. Democrat, I'm sorry, uh, rather, our Republicans in both Texas and D.C. See that I talked to are worried he's not going to win. Uh, the Club for Growth has played there uh, in the mail. Other conservative groups have played there as well. Because of his advanced age, it's not a pure ideological victory if the right was to win here, but you can be assured, given their recent record, that they will trumpet any victory that they get. Peter? Uh, this is something flying a little bit under the radar in the invisible primary, but this Friday night, Chris Christie is going to Nashville, Tennessee to speak at the Tennessee Republican Party's annual statesman's dinner. Uh, it's apparently selling tickets like hotcakes, one of the biggest events they've had. This is important for a couple of reasons. One, Nashville uh, is a huge Republican donor hub outside of Texas and New York. It's a big, uh, big money place because of not just country music, there's a big Christian publishing industry and healthcare. There's a lot of Republican money there. But two, this is Christie's uh, first trip to the South since winning re-election, since sort of laying groundwork for a presidential bid. So it'll sort of be an interesting place for him to test his message. So I'm going to be taking a look at that on Friday. You ever notice Peter mentions meals a lot? <laughs> <laughs> Hungry. It's not, a, not a bad thing on Memorial Day weekend. Uh, the, the race to watch that is going to be coming on June 3rd, it's not only uh, what happens in Mississippi, it's going to be what happens in Iowa. Uh, who wins there? It is a very contested Republican primary. Both sides are, are going to come out of the gate uh, blasting. You're going to have Democrats trying to define who they believe will, and, and, and some of them hope, will be the nominee on the Republican side. Joni Ernst, you're going to have uh, Republicans who are well aware that it's going to be difficult for Braley, the Democrat, to run against a woman. That is a very, very important contest to keep an eye on. I'll keep an eye on that one. And Peter mentioned the contest I want to close with a bit earlier. Uh, pediatric neurosurgeon Monica Webby, she won the Oregon Republican Senate primary, despite last minute late campaign stories about her allegedly stalking two former boyfriends after breaking up with them. Now, Repu the men both say water under the bridge happened a long time ago. Forget about it. Hard feelings are over. But the Republicans blame this on Democratic smear attacks. However, I am told that the National Republican Senatorial Committee decided to send out some communication gurus just because they're a tad worried that, the, A, these attacks could hurt, but more worried that Webby and her campaign team not ready for what will now be a top-tier Senate race. So some communications help sent out to Oregon. She's running against the Democratic incumbent, Jeff Merkley.